Now there's two key factors when you're using images on your website and your content management system. The first is consistency. So that's keeping every image pretty much consistent throughout your site when you upload them. Bearing in mind that you may get given digital shots, you may take digital shots yourself. Some of them may be landscape, some of them may be portrait. So we need a way of creating an element of consistency. That's usually driven by the width of an image because people scroll up and down on their website. And it's a case of trying to create a way of keeping that consistent across a website. So what I tend to do is initially when I create a new website and I've got some templates set up is I'll work out what size works the best and then I'll use that size moving forward. So I'll literally say every image I use I want to end up using at X amount of pixels by X amount of pixels, Y amount of pixels. Now I use Photoshop to do this. So say for instance we'd ascertained that I would like my images 250 pixels by 250 pixels. This image here is currently 1024 by 1365. In real terms, when we choose our resolution of 72 pixels per inch, which is a screen resolution for a monitor, that's bigger than an A3 sheet of paper. So what I do is I crop my image down to the size I want and I constrained that to a square and then I changed that to 250 pixels so our initial image size was 4 megabytes and we're down to 183k and then when that's saved out for the web I end up with a file that's just 28k there now using Photoshop which is a fair few hundred pounds is a great way of doing it. I have started using an online piece of software also called Picnic, P I C N I K dot com, which is allows me to do perform the same functions online on a website for free. Now there is a premium version of this software which is twenty five dollars. Alternatively we can choose a photo, there's my photo there, and upload this for free. Now that's going to take a few seconds to upload, and as if by magic it's uploaded. So here's my image here and I can zoom straight in, and even at 100% you get a good idea of the scale of the size of that image. Now what I'm looking to do here is utilize the tools available to resize it. So under the edit tab here, these two here, I can either resize my image, so I can actually choose a specific dimension. So if I was happy with that image and I'm going to work to a width of 250, I just change that. If I wanted to resize it and make it square, it would obviously squash the image. So the first thing I'm going to do, if I've, if I've, if I've ascertained on my website that I want all of the images 250 by 250, I can actually crop my image and I can put in a specific size. It's not going to let me do that. So we'll make it square. So that will constrain that to a square. Choose the image area that I like. And then I just need to resize that down accordingly to 250 by 250. And then when I'm ready to save that, let's give it a name. Choose JPEG, which is best for most photos, as it says. JPEG compression basically allows you to really break down the compression and make a much smaller file in, ter in terms of how many megabytes or how many K it is, but never really go beneath 7. So they're suggesting 8 here, which means that the quality is still very good, but it's a little bit compressed. Ultimately, JPEGs are compressed anyway, so the, the files are relatively small. So I'm going to save that onto my desktop. 
and then here's my original image which was 1.4 megabytes saved as a JPEG and here's my new image which is just 24k so you can see that that's much more effective in terms of optimization when you're loading an image that's 24k compared to one which is 1400k so the website address again is picnic p i c n i k dot com